MacBook storage is expensive. That's no secret. In the past, it's been pretty straightforward to avoid the Apple tax that came with buying extra storage. In the early 2000s with the PowerBook line, while being a little stubborn to get into, was easy enough to upgrade your storage, your RAM, and your battery for cheap. Later on in 2008 to 2012, the new line of MacBook and MacBook Pros made it just as straightforward to upgrade everything in your machine. In fact, Steve Jobs outright encouraged the idea of opening your MacBook at one point. Access the battery and the drives right through a lid in the bottom, just pop it off, you pop the battery out, pop the hard drive out if you want, pop a solid state drive in, pop the battery back in, pop the lid on. It wasn't until the release of the Retina MacBook Pro in 2012 that Apple slowly started the shift of less and less upgradability in their systems, and in 2016, that reality was finally realized with the release of the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, a computer that had absolutely zero user upgradable parts. But right before that, there was this. This is my 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro, and it is technically the last upgradable MacBook Pro. I love this thing to death, man. This thing is my workhorse and it has never, ever failed me. It does everything I throw at it right and I'm even using it to write the script for this video. But sadly, I did buy the base model and honestly, 128 gigabytes in 2020 is just, it's just not enough, man. Not, not, for, the, not for the work that I do. Uh, I do use this two terabyte external hard drive. I mean, it works, but it is just so slow to work off of and having this thing attached to my MacBook whenever I wanna do some sort of work is such a pain. I recently had two Photoshop files corrupt me under a tight deadline, and after that happened to me, I decided I needed to do something about this. Now, not that long ago, if you wanted to upgrade your storage on this 2015 MacBook Pro, you had two options. Go and buy an Apple SSD pulled straight from another MacBook, but since Apple used weird proprietary SSDs, these were kind of expensive, and you could only go up to about 500 gigabytes. Or you could buy an OWC drive, which is the only other drive that natively works on these machines. But these are also expensive. I have no idea why. Some of these options are more expensive than just the Apple drives for some reason. 240 gigabytes for $180. 500 gigabytes for $250. And yeah, no one's going to pay that much for one terabyte. But recently, now, there's a third cheaper option. With the release of macOS Mojave back in 2018, macOS now natively supports any non-native NVMe SSD that you toss into it, with some few minor exceptions. This wasn't really advertised anywhere, and even Googling it now, it's kind of hard to find any news about this. So when I heard this, I was so hyped. Uh, so I splurged. I got this one terabyte Western Digital Black SSD. Now, you don't need something super high-end like this. I just wanted to get all fancy with it. This one was $145 shipped from Newegg. And the part that makes this all possible is a $16 adapter that you install directly into the MacBook. It's really straightforward how this is going to work, you'll see. Real quick, I'm going to turn on my computer and then make a time machine backup to transfer over to the new SSD. After that, we're good to go. We can start digging into the insides now. As you can see, there's not a whole lot you can play with around inside here. Everything is mostly glued in or soldered on. But thankfully the drive is still removable. Before anything, of course, you got to unplug the battery. And here's my 128 gigabytes of disappointment. This is really not useful for me. Look at that. Okay, so I took out the one terabyte and I was in shock how tiny this thing was. It's like a stick of gum. Like it was super small. Look, 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 look. Okay, okay. Ready, ready, ready. Ah, ah, <laughs> look. Ah, it's even smaller like the standard SSD. Like, that's crazy. Like, look how small that is. Anyways, we put in the adapter and we're good to go. See, wasn't that easy? All right, so I turned it on to go into recovery mode and this is where stuff gets unnecessarily complicated. I'm 
gonna be a good friend today and save you like the three hours of troubleshooting that I had to do on this computer because I could just I just could not figure out why the drive wasn't being detected by the computer. Out of desperation, I decided to go check out the Amazon listing and at the very bottom of the description, I see it. The drive doesn't work if you boot it from the online recovery mode. You have to make a bootable flash drive with macOS on it, boot into that, and only then will the computer see the drive. Fortunately, after that, it's all smooth sailing. Uh, you format the drive into APFS mode, uh, install macOS like normal. God, that number looks nice. And uh, you're good to go. After this was done, I took the time to update to macOS Catalina and made sure that everything still worked. All right, cool. After macOS is installed, booting into internet recovery mode works exactly as intended with the drive. I'm going to load up my time machine back up and go to bed because at this point it was passing 4 a.m. and it looked like the backup was going to take a while. The next morning I booted up my MacBook and to my delight was welcome to everything still being in its place. Only with like eight times the storage. <laughs> I guess we can try some benchmarks now. Uh, first up, the old mechanical external hard drive. About an average of 60 megabytes per second. Jeez. It's no wonder there was a pain to do anything off of this thing. <laughs> All right, now the built-in drive. 500 to 600 megabytes. That's pretty good. Speed wasn't my problem. It's just that 128 gigabytes is really small. All right, now for the stick of gum. Oh, wow. Almost 1400 megabytes on read and write. That's double the speeds at least. While impressive, I'm not really sure why I'm getting those numbers though. The box advertised at least speeds of 3000 and up. If anyone knows why this may be, let me know, but otherwise I'm still super happy with these numbers. A quick note, I want to make it clear that this is not the last MacBook Pro with removable storage. The 2016 MacBook Pro with no touch bar does technically have a removable drive, but it's proprietary. And at the moment, there's no way to upgrade this in any way since only the base model, no touch bar, 128 gigabyte model have them. This might change in the future, but at the time of this video, it's just not possible. Either way, this project is complete. Let me explain to you why this makes the most sense for me. Like I said, I just love this little machine. And this 2015 MacBook Pro is still super modern. Like this is an actual daily machine that doesn't have caveats like, oh, maybe it's a little loud because it runs so hot or, oh, it's a little chunky, so it's a little bit heavy. Like, no, this is a real whole ass MacBook that you can use for school, for video editing, for design work. It still has all the good ports without sacrificing thinness or weight. The screen is still killer and super color accurate. And now with faster and larger storage in it, this machine is ready to take on a lot for the average user. These go for about 350 to 400 bucks used now. Stick a cheaper one terabyte SSD in there for like 80 bucks and you got a very enjoyable Mac experience. The longevity in these MacBooks is something that you just don't see too often in other laptops. And while I'm not sure that I can say the same thing for the new one MacBook Pros, since they're not very upgradable anymore, I can confidently say that this MacBook is going to last me a very long time, at least until I finish college. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if any subscribers are watching, thanks for the love on the recent Joy-Con video. Uh, there was a lot of kind comments in that video, and currently, as I'm recording this, it just hit 2,500 views, which I just did not expect for a first video. It seems like you guys really love that type of content. I have an Animal Crossing Switch unboxing on the way. I'm just currently waiting for it to arrive. So if you like stuff like that, maybe stay tuned. Otherwise, thanks for the love. And again, thanks for watching.